morning, people. Amen. Early in the morning, five. All right, now. Minister Dwight Gower, Church of Christ, proudly said, back again for a segment of part one and part two. I got 17 minutes and seconds to talk, baby. So we have to move on with things. I got quite a bit. This early this morning, uh, we're going to be talking about God's 66 love letters. The Bible. Amen. I'm going to reach and feel my thoughts here. We'll just get right on down with it here. Amen. This is God's story from beginning to end. Genesis to Revelation. God has been so good to man. Amen. Giving to free will, free food to eat, clothes to naked, all material things, the very essence and quality of life. He loves us so much that he's gave his only begotten son just so none of us should perish. <clears throat> and you know what? Only the obedient of his inspired word you know, and living faith is going to make it to the gate there, fam. All right. Heaven has been described in the book of Revelation, but no one's ever seen it personally. You have love, kindness, healing, chastening when you need it. Of course, the chest tire, Holy Ghost butt whipping. All because he loves you. We as people, a handful of us is only righteous compared to the billions that have been sent down to earth. I think we got eight or nine billion people on the earth, somewhere right around in there. Yeah, some some races and everything is a little bit more productive than others. I know in China they got a restriction on kids. Overpopulated. All right. I'm going to start out with Genesis. And you keep up with me. I'm going to move on through. I'm going to highlight, say something, the, the highlight of each book. Hoping that it inspires you enough that my word can draw you in to, to Christ church. Church of Christ. I'm hoping that you'll be, you'll fall in love with Jesus just like I did. And God inspired word. Oh. Mm. All right now. Let me gear up here. All right. Genesis. The beginning of creation. That's the reason why we're here. Amen. Exodus. Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt. That was a hard task. They had a bunch of plagues in the land. And a bunch of hardships. Out there in the desert. Alright. Leviticus. Pre <coughs> presenting of various offerings for a sweet Savior to the Lord. God love a sweet Savior. Amen. Leviticus. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Numbers, the census of Israel, counting the people. All right. Deuteronomy, tribe leaders, penalties for rebellion. God's starting to lay down that law here now. Joshua, the crossover to Jordan. He was the one that took up the people from that point. Moses was, was not allowed because he disobeyed as he struck the rock. He wasn't going to Jordan. But he led him to, that's what Joshua took over. Judges, Israel's disobedient. Deborah judges Israel. That's the first woman leader in the picture. All right, Ruth, there go another woman. Accepts Israelites and their God as her own. She chose to make the right choice because God is the only God. All right, now. First Samuel, that's the last Hebrew judge. The first major prophet to preach inside of Israel. Second Samuel. David anointed king of Judah. Here's the story of David and Goliath. Yeah, so he got the king. He, he was made king right around that time. Okay. First Kings. David proclaims King Solomon. Solomon was David's son. Amen. Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. And the richest. Second king, Elijah ascends to heaven by a whirlwind. Get this, get this, get this straight. Now, now, Jesus is the only one in the New Testament scripture that had the power to walk in and out of heaven. That's the Son of God. 
In this case, Elijah didn't have no power to go to heaven. He was taken up by God uh, by a whirlwind. That's the difference between those two scenarios. All right, let's stay with it now. First Chronicles, families of Esau and Israel, those tribes. Second Samuel, I mean Second Chronicles. Solomon builds a temple. Amen. A lot of people had work. He had a lot of money. Solomon was on the wisest and the richest man that ever lived on earth. Amen. He was a pretty, pretty good, pretty good uh, uh, position. Ezra, there go another woman. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, led captives into Jerusalem and Judah. Amen. Okay, let's move on here. We got quite a bit to cover. Nehemiah, the people confessed their sins, the restoration of the walls of Jerusalem. Amen. Esther, another woman. All right. God seeing something in these women back in the old days. They had, they had a lot of strong faith. All right. That's the queen of Persia. Mm, they had some of them harems over there too. And concubines, just as well. That's what's missing of all these marriages up in these days and times. God got this thing tightened up where you can't be bouncing around marriage and get somebody, oh, you made me mad. Let me just go ahead and just divorce you. Can't do that now. See, you got three allergies, but I said there's no segment. All right, now. Job, the man of tremendous test of faith in the form of sufferings. Let me test him. You can do anything but kill him. And he still prevailed. He was a man of God. Yes, sir. Psalms, spiritual, spiritual scriptures of words accompanied with instrumental music. Instrumental music was allowed in the worship service back in the old times. You can go there and scroll there and hit the top picture, go on that number beside it, and scroll all the way down to those early videos in another segment. Okay, you get that info. Right now, let's go back to the business at hand then. Proverbs. Oh, King Solomon, the richest man ever lived on earth, son of David, implying, endorses wisdom, the most wisest ever. Amen. Ecclesiastes, King Solomon's directive of time and place for everything. Listen, King Solomon told us in Ecclesiastes, there's time to live, time to die. Time to pray, time to cry. It's time for everything. All right? Sometimes it's best to just shut up. You just got to figure out what that is. Learn to discern those things. Shut up for prayer. He can you You ain't got to be naive. Talk to God. Isaiah. Warn of judgment of subsequent restoration of Judah, <clears throat> Jerusalem, and the nation. All right. Jeremiah. I like Isaiah and I like Jeremiah too. God's case against Israel. Who? Lamentations. Collective of laments. Poetically for the destruction of Jerusalem. Jerusalem keep going up and down. People, you know, Jerusalem just, them Israelites are just hard, uh, uh, them Israelites just hard headed. Going in and out of the land, all the back around, you know, they up and God make the land desolate and send somewhere. And blah, 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 over here. Just disobedient. Up and down. People, God don't like these things. Let's go ahead and make that choice to serve Him and remain faithful. Trust me, it's going to be worth it. It's a big prize. Amen. Now let's move on. Daniel, the prophet spared in the lion's den. Amen. Hosea, an era where Israel turned away from God to idols, calves, and Jeroboam, Baal, a Canaanite god. All right, graven images. I mean, number one god. They're wasting their time. Praying to some a big statue or eagle or whatever the case may be. Calves. I'm saying, if you made them, how do you think they had this power? Not even practical. It's really a joke. Joel, part of the Hebrew Bible. Joel, in part of a group of prophetic books known as the Twelve Minor Prophets, term meaning short-lengthened text in relation to longer-lengthened text. 
All right. Uh, mournful over what's left over. They had great plagues. And uh, this is also referred to the day of the Lord. They had all that going on here. Amos, one of the twelve minor prophets, ruler over Israel from 793 B.C. to 753 B.C. And ruled Uz Uzziah, king of Judah, at the time both kingdoms, Israel in the north and Judah in the south. Okay? Broke up there for a minute there. <clears throat> Were both at peak of prosper. Amen. Obadiah, an oracle in concern of divine judgment of Eden and Israel's restoration, minor prophet of the Old Testament. Jonah, minor prophet of the Hebrew Bible, who is sent by God to prophesy destruction of Nebo, but tries to escape the divine mission. He didn't want, really want to do it at first. And he's almost narrative. That book is almost a nar narrative type of book. I had to really concentrate on it. Simple prayer and everything. You get your answer. Jonah. In being, it has settings, plots, and themes. His prayers and thanksgiving. Mika. Reproach unjust leaders. He defended the rights of the poor against the wealthy and powerful and likeness social and enlightened so, social just, uh, justice. An honorable man. Nahum, seventh, seventh prophet of the Hebrew Bible. His name means comforter, and he, he was said to be a naturalist, which meaning a person who studied or is, in, or is an expert in natural history. He's sort of kind of like Matthew. We're going to be talking about that when we get in part two of this segment. All right. Uh, Habaku. I hope I said that right. Interest of outcry of the Lord almost complaining in nature. The prophet's prayer. That's what it's referred to it anyway. That's what has been talked about. Uh, Zephaniah. Prophet son of Cushi. Judge, judge, all, judge on nations. Wickedness of Jerusalem again. All right, a faithful remnant. What's the remnant is what's left over. More said is also justifiable. I had to get in there. Zephaniah's a little short book too. Uh, Hege, book of the Hebrew Bible, a short book, only two chapters. No personal information about him. His name derived from Hebrew verbal root H G G, which means to make a pilgrimage. His message filled urgency for the people, uh, proceeding the rebuilding of the temple, and end with prediction of downfall of the kingdom. All right now. Zechariah, future joy of Zion, the golden city, restoration of Judah. Malachi, last minor prophet, book of some treachery, and uh, infidelity, also a book of remembrance. Okay, people, I know I went through that quite a bit, but in each segment, you know, I got 17 minutes plus seconds to talk, so I have to get on and get the job done and hit the high points. Now, as you re go back and, go and study this, these uh, uh, Old Testament, New Testament, God's 66 books, love letters, is what I'm referring them to. Amen. Get yourself to the nearest church of Christ if you need to study this further. We'll wait for you. Talk to the elders, the deacons, the ministers, and the Christian brothers and sisters that can sit down and counsel you. They're more than willing. You go from sinner to saint, milk to the meat, as if you obey the gospel, and migrate up to the prime real. Now, remember to live faithfully, and heaven can be your home. It's going to be worth it forever. Everlasting. This is Nancy Dwight Yarra, and I'll see you shortly in God's 66 Love Letters, the Bible, Part 2. This is Part 1. Remember now, the minister loves you. Amen.